Good morning and welcome to an all new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Nate Wynn. And I'm Austin Daly. Senior Bowl Court has been selected. Nominees include Lexi Angel, Katie Chambers, Alyssa Crawford, Camry Hunt, Jessica Vanderhagen, Grant Baer, Braden Paletti, Jay Rosano, Braden Salisbury, and James Tucker. A new CIF rule will allow high school students to transfer from school to school for athletic reasons. These athletes will have to sit out the first 30 days of the season, but will not be subject to year-long suspensions. The EOTSN crew will weigh the changes impact on athletics later in the show. Yesterday, the new Math and Science Tutoring Center opened. A new tutoring center in Edmond 2 will be strictly for math and science help. So we've been running the Tiger Tutoring Center since school started. Um, it's all subjects are welcome and it runs three days a week and it's mostly run, there's a teacher supervisor, but it's mostly run with the student tutors um, there to help students in whatever subject there is. The center was open to allow the abundance of students who need math and science help to have a separate room. Um, we have found that the majority of students that come in are there for math help. Um, and so we decided that we wanted to try to focus specifically on the math help. So that is why we decided to open up a math, a specific just to math tutoring. The new math and science center will be run by teacher tutors rather than student tutors. In hopes to help all students in whatever they want. If they want a student tutor to help them, they're welcome to go to the Tiger Tutoring Center. If they feel like they want one-on-one -on -one with a the teacher, then that's an opportunity for them to come there. The Math and Science Center will now be available to all students Tuesdays and Thursdays. The California Department of Education named Roswell a Gold Ribbon School. The Golden Ribbon Award is given to schools that excel at implementing state board policy and meet average standardized testing score requirements. For the school's reputation, it just um, enhances what's already a great reputation in the community and a great reputation um, just throughout California as being a, a school that works hard to help kids succeed and help kids to get on to the next step of their life and, and be ready for college. So um, we're really excited that we received the, the award. Congrats to Scott Brink, Emily Dodds, and Kashila Jones, who were chosen as this year's Teachers Who Make a Difference. Now we go to Jason Russell for sports, who sat down with RHS athletes yesterday to weigh the pros and cons of the CIF transfer changes. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of EOTSN. I'm Josh Carson alongside Sam Toomey and Jason Russell. So we got viewpoint for you today in our topic. Transferring high schools for solely athletic reasons will no longer violate California interscholastic Federation policy starting in the 2017-18 school year. The CIF passed the new guidelines with a 138 vote last Friday. So basically what this means is now high school athletes can transfer to another high school for the reason of playing athletics. So they'll no longer have to come up with any other reason to transfer. Jason, what do you think of this new rule change? I don't know because, um, I mean, I, I think it's nice now that people wouldn't have to like lie why they're, you know, why they're changing high schools. Um, so I think that's nice. Um, but, you know, I mean, who, who knows how people are going to use this rule? I mean, who knows how many people are going to transfer to the same school? Who knows? Because, you know, everybody's interconnected now with social media and everything. Everybody knows everybody. So who's to say that people won't, you know, get together and say, hey, let's transfer to, you know, X high school and then let's play together. So who knows? You know, I mean, who knows if the rule is going to be abused or not? Okay, with that being said, Sam, do you think you will see – I guess some high school super teams forming, I mean, maybe to the top high schools, as you know, it already does happen. You see, in a specifically a high school basketball example, there are always people that are going to the top schools. Yeah. Same thing with football and other sports. But now this could happen at levels and even levels in the CBC. So, do you think this could be a problem that Roseville could end up facing or benefit from going forward? Um, Roseville specifically, I don't think they have a, like, the school has the type of pedigree that will bring in athletes, like I don't, I don't think athletes are saying, hey, I need to go to Roseville High School right here. So I think that might hurt. This role might hurt Roseville in the long run. And just like you said, uh, private schools were already doing this. I think they could already take from uh, kids from all over, like uh, Jesuit and then like the prep schools type of things like that. They were already doing this. So we already saw high school super teams, like you said, but now that we can have that on a public school level, where if I was like, hey, I want to go play with Jordan Brown at Wood Creek, now, what do I, sit out 30 days? That's nothing. Well, now that we can have super teams on public school levels, you're going to have a huge discrepancy in leagues where there's the really, really good teams in the leagues and then just awful teams. 
All right, to wrap up this viewpoint, we debated the whole super team aspect of this. I think us as all former players, we're all really interested in that aspect of this. But really, from this article here, it seems like the CIF passed this just so you know the students' transfer could be more honest. And I think that's the reason why they did it. And they got a 100 to 38 vote on it. So it seemed pretty unanimous. But important to note, Sac Joaquin section, what we're in here, they housed the Capital Valley Conference at Roseville High School, was one of the three sections in the CIF to vote against the transfer rule change. So we'll see how that all plays out and all the feedback that they give over the next upcoming seasons. It starts in the 2017-18 school year. All right, for Viewpoint and EOTSN, Josh Carson, Jason Russell, Sam Toomey, we'll see you next time. Now we go over to entertainment. Thanks guys. This past week, arguably two of the biggest movie franchises, Star Wars and Marvel, came out with new trailers for their new movies that are coming out towards the end of the year, with Thor Ragnarok and Star Wars The Last Jedi. I'll start off with Thor Ragnarok, as Marvel really showed how they're going to reinvent the character of Thor, as this movie looks to be a ton of fun. The trailer shows us that Asgard is now in ruins and taken over by the evil Hela, played by Cate Blanchett, who makes a big impression by destroying Thor's hammer Mjolnir and banishing him to the new planet, where Thor, who looks a lot like Macbeth now, has to fight in gladiator-type battles to free himself. This trailer completely sold me on the movie, as it looks to be taking a lot from another space team that Marvel has in Guardians of the Galaxy, but it also looks to be making the Thor movies fun, while adding humor and an interesting story, where in the previous movies, they kind of struggled and are on the lower receiving end of the fans. My favorite part of the trailer is this moment right here at the end. It's main event time. He's a friend from work. Moving on to the Star Wars trailer. I was beyond hyped waiting to see a trailer for the new movie because just like The Force Awakens, everything about the story is mostly kept a secret, which is good. The trailer was very much a Star Wars trailer. While not as good as The Force Awakens trailer we got a few years back, it did one thing that I wanted to do, and that was not ruin any of the major plot points in the trailer. Star Wars played it safe, and they showed us very impressive visuals. All the same characters as before, like Finn, Rey, Poe, Kylo Ren, and BB-8. Plus, we got some very haunting words from Luke to close out the trailer with, it's time for the Jedi to end. The Last Jedi does look like it's finally going to explore more of the balance side of the Force, which is something that we haven't seen yet, and I'm all for that. I do think that this is a Star Wars that they will finally take a chance and break out of the mold that Force Awakens had. Don't get me wrong, I love, Star I love all the Star Wars movies, minus the prequels, but in the end, this trailer did what its job was and left me hyped for Episode 8 in December. And that's it for my trailer review, and now we go back to news. Thanks, Preston. RHS had some visitors last Wednesday. Middle school students came to rehearse their upcoming musical in the Patty Baker Theater. It's, it's a really big transition for them, but it's very exciting at the same time because the stage that we uh, perform in at the junior high, very tiny. They come here, huge stage, lighting, sound. They get to work backstage, see what it's like to have a full working theater. So it's a really great experience for them. So they're always so excited when we finally get here to the high school. Seat selection for senior ball starts next week. You can sign up on the stage in the cafeteria during both lunches. Remember, tables are limited to 10 people. And that's it for us today on Eye of the Tiger. And remember, we're always on eyeofthetigernews.com. See you next time.